Okay, on our little 23C here, the sump's gone and there was only three bolts holding that in. So you can see around the engine, they've nicked a heap of bolts. Like I haven't undone any of these bolts, they're all just missing and missing down here. And that's all right, doesn't matter, it was a freebie. So I'll start by pulling this front pulley off and I thought it would be interesting just to see um, just to watch everything go around. We can turn the engine over by hand, so we'll just watch everything run around. So I've unfolded the lock tabs here. So you're gonna need an inch and a 7 16 spanner on a nut gun in our case. And there's no need for that to be super tight. The lock tab, you know it's one of my videos when I drop shit. So there's the lock tab. That lock tab was actually doing nothing because it hasn't got the little, the little tit folded over where it should be there. So normally that keyway, which we have coming up here, would be down the bottom when you're on top dead centre. And it has a, a washer on the front here. That's a good little bolt. Bit rough around the edges. Now this here, the lock tab, I have a friend sent me one that he lays a cut out of a TEF20. He copied it, so let's see if they're the same. Okay, here is the 23C lock tab, and here's the lock tab that my friend cut for the TEF20, and it lays a cut, so look, I'm pretty sure they are certainly the same tab. Yeah, a bit of a bargain, that. And you can see on this one, they've got the little, if I stay in focus, there's a little tag there and you knock that down so that when you go to sit it in, it goes there. So that's something we didn't know if that fitted a 23C or not. Uh, but yeah, by going by this, he's made a, a lock tab that'll do both. Great idea. He also made a cam lock tab for the TEF20, so we're going to give that a try as well. So we'll get a bit of a screwdriver over here. These aren't normally very tight. But I'll just have a bit of a lever with the wrong tools here. Oh, uh, yeah, look at that. And what we look for here is to have a look what sort of wear mark is there from the seal. Now that's got a little lip there. You don't need to be too worried about a little lip. The, the rubber seals will seal on a lip, no worries at all. If you polish that lip with a bit of wet and dry paper, even though there's a slight little detent, the seal will follow that. And if there's no sharp edges there because you've polished it, um, that will seal. It'll be a good seal. Okay. We'll put that in the box. I've got my little favourite little Makita nut guns here. Um, just a good thing to use. I'm going to get this generator bracket out of the way. And we'll leave the bolt on that. We have a few bolts down the bottom here, so we'll rattle this off. Another one here. And one in the middle. Oh, hang on, one up here. If you see me missing something like that, just yell out and tell me, eh? And one in the middle. And it'll short follow. You can't get that off with the front pulley on. So we'll... Oh, 
We'll slide that off. That's all okay inside, looks good. That's what you'd expect to see. Here's our timing system. This is the oil pump down the bottom there. You have a washer in front of the crank gear. That's an oil flinger really. Um, the pulley comes and bolts up against that. So any oil that wants to come down in there, it's supposed to hop on this lip here and fling it out so it doesn't go to your seal. So that can go in the pot. And everything else there looks pretty good. Like it's what you'd expect to see. I'm going to leave that like that for the moment. Later on when we get the cylinder head and all off, I'd like to turn the engine over with the piston right up on top and we'll just follow what it does. This keyway should be down I believe for top dead centre. The oil pump here, this is what we're going to try and rework, put a new bush in here if we can. These um, timing chain tensions, this looks in good nick really. Um, yeah they're certainly, they're available. You can undo the back here and there's a little screw you can push it out and it, it locks them in. Sometimes you can just give them a bit of a lever and it stays there. You hear that little click? I don't know if you did or not. But there's a little click there and so that took the timing chain tensioner out to the next um, the next detent I suppose and it's taken any wear out of that chain. So any slop. But in doing that when you, when you push here and you have a worn chain, well, uh, if this is stretched, well, it does put your pump out of whack anyway. So that's just how it goes. All right, I'll pop this water pump and the water pump housing off out of the way. We don't need that there. Um, I'm thinking one of the gaskets we could make would be behind the, the housing here. So, I'll bring the camera up a little bit so you can see what we're up to now. These are 9 16th socket I'm using for this. Now the same water pump was on the 23C, the TEA, TED, TEF20 and the, all the petrol models, all the petrol standard motor company models, I should say that, there is Continental models in the States. I'll get my knockometer. And there you go, that's the water pump. Yeah, that's a bit, bit um, scratchy. And then we have a couple of bolts, bolts here, so. Whoop, hit the tripod. And there we go. So, there is a gasket that comes along through here, down around there, then back around here. Now, to my knowledge, we can't buy that gasket without buying the entire kit. So, what we're going to do is, and look, you could have one little round gasket there on the bolt, and one separate one here. And I think that may be... No, it has been a paper one right across. So part of our pulling this engine apart is to look at making parts that we can't buy normally. So I'll probably jump on the laser and we'll do a pattern for this gasket here. And then we'll, we'll be able to offer it as a part on its own. And look, the reason for that is sometimes when you remove the water pump, if this housing here is quite dirty, and you think, oh, I should pull that off and give it a bit of a clean out. Well, as soon as you pull this off, you have no gasket there to um, reseal the housing up with. So 
what people have done in the past, they use a silastic, a silicon based gasket material and by using a silicon based gasket material there's a chance of getting bits of rubbish in your cooling system here and um, yeah just loosening it up so I'll be drawing a pattern from that. Okay, this thermostat housing here, it looks like, I think there's only one bolt holding it on. We might get that out of the way, that's a half inch socket we need for there. Is there any other bolts there? Feels like there's something there. I'll have a, I'll have a bit of a look up in through the back here. Oh yes, there's one hiding in there. We'll grab that. It's just in there. This will give us a bit of a look in the cooling system as well. Oh, just can't get it with my fingers. Looks like the gauge has been broken off at some stage there. There we go. That's the housing, that doesn't look too bad. Looks like we've had a few ants build in here. Nothing major. <laughs> anyway, it's an old motor. All right, we'll reposition the camera and we'll get it ready to pop up and take the head off. Okay, we're on the right side of the engine now. That's, that's the front. And just so you can keep a bit of an eye on what I'm doing around here, we'll pop this inlet manifold off. Now, this one has a heater plug in it. So I think that may be an aftermarket one. I'm not 100% sure, I'll find out. In the tin with that one. Now there's two 9 16 bolts, or three eight bolts that a 9 16 socket fits. In under here. We'll just rattle them off. And they're a longer nut, same as on the manifold by the look of it, on the exhaust manifold. And that just pulls out over the studs. Now that manifold looks good. There's nothing there that would make you think it's not reusable. We'll pop that down here. Drop the nuts in the box. You can see the gaskets are a, the gaskets do two inlet and one exhaust, then there's a separate gasket in here. They're available as a kit. The engine breather pipe. Just wiggles out. That's as good as you'd expect. Okay, I might take the camera around the other side because we have the injectors and the pipes and all that. And yeah, we'll come in so you can have a bit of a look at what we're doing. 